Hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm Brie from BriannaLens.com and today I would love to show you how to crochet these beautiful and super cute crochet amigurumi candy corn. This is a lovely beginner pattern. It is a free pattern by Stephanie of GraceAndYarn.com. I will link uh, the free pattern down below. And I just, I couldn't wait to show this to you guys because I have been asked to do some beginner amigurumi projects and this is to me a perfect pattern. So go ahead and get your yarn. I'm using Red Heart yarn. I will have everything linked down below to get your supplies and let's go ahead and get started. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to crochet this free pattern. And I'm also, uh, yeah, I'm going to show you how to crochet this really simple candy corn and let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that I did for this free pattern is I went ahead and I copied and I pasted into a Word document. So I made it something that was easy for me to read and I put, you know, the, uh, the website and the URL right there. So that way I remember who I got this from. On the back of my worksheet, I write down what yarn I am using and then what colors. And I also write down what size hook I'm using. So if I have to stop this project, if I wanna make more of these uh, at any point, I can. The beautiful thing about this project is that it starts from the bottom and works its way up. I love this pattern and she does a beautiful job. And so let's go ahead and get started. Today I'm going to be using a size F hook, a 3.75 millimeter. You will have to refer to Stephanie's pattern to see what hook size she recommends. I usually vary um, my hook size a little bit more because I'm a tight crocheter and I just don't prefer to work with super small hooks. I'm not gonna be revealing anything in this pattern as usual. I just think this is a fantastic pattern for a beginner in amigurumi. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of uh, have this be a visual place for you to watch how I do this without revealing anything from her free pattern, which uh, if you do wanna follow along, make sure you go over to Stephanie's website and uh, copy and paste like I did. And let's go ahead and get started. I always chain into the back of my starting chain. All right, so I always crochet into the back of my starting chain and I always, no matter what, I always uh, mark my first stitch. This just helps me have a point of, did I count right? What it, am, I, am I going forward? Because if I mess up on the beginning row, I mean, I could do a lot of work and find out later I did a lot of mistakes. So this is just kind of an assurance policy for me. I don't think you get any rewards for not using a stitch marker, but you do you. So I'm gonna go ahead and work my way across. last chain okay now I'm going to make my way around the other side And now I have the V's to work from. I went too far down in that one. No, I did that right.
Um, hold on. So now I'm supposed to, I'm gonna count to make sure I have enough chain of my stitches. And I do, I have the correct number of stitches. So now I can go ahead and start two and uh, round two. And this is going to be the base of my bottom. And so now you should be able to work across um, around because you have your perfect round starting point. And I will meet you when we get to the color change at orange. So I'm gonna go ahead and work through the pattern. I think that you, uh, even as a beginner amigurumi, uh, if you n understand crochet, you'll be able to go ahead and go through to orange. And I wanna show you the invisible uh, color change that she does so well in her pattern. I'm currently on round seven and I just realized I have an invisible decrease. So I wanna show you how to do that. It's really simple. It's the same as a single crochet decrease, except you're only picking up the front leg. Okay, you're not picking up the whole V, you're just picking up the front leg and you're completing as normal. And then the um, next important thing is that you start right next to your stitch. So you don't get lost and increase your stitches or, or skip a stitch. You, um, you just do your invisible decrease and you pay close attention to where your next stitch is and you keep going right along and then you keep counting, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and do the next one with you again. Okay, so here's another one. Okay, so front leg, front leg, pull through, and I've got my eye on that next stitch all the time. Okay, okay so here's the last one. Front leg, front leg, pull through, and you're done. Okay, see, it's not so bad. So we are at the point now where we are ready to change colors to orange. I just finished round eight. Okay, I have the right number of stitches. Always good to double check before you do a color change or you move on to a next point that you make sure you have the right number of stitches on your round. It doesn't take long. Um, so yeah, um, you can weave this in for these. I'm not going to. I usually do, but I'm not going to. Um, so I have, oh, that's why I did what I did. I didn't do that last stitch for a reason. Okay. So I'm at the end of my round and I have one stitch remaining. Okay. So I have the correct number of stitches. I've done my counting. I've got one stitch remaining. So here's where we're gonna be working in the last stitch of this round and the beginning stitch of the next round, and this is where the magic happens, okay? I am going to go in and pull up, and I've got two loops, and I'm not gonna finish my single crochet. I'm going to cut my yarn, and I am going to bring in my next color, which is orange. I like to make sure that my loops are taut, not too tight, but just taut. And I am going to finish my stitch with my new color. And a lot of this is practice on keeping your tension and you might have to do it a couple times and that's okay. I'm gonna remove my stitch marker. And here I am going to insert my hook. Okay, I'm inserting my hook and I am going to slip stitch loosely so I can work through it. And I'm gonna immediately put my stitch marker back because this is the beginning of my round. This is single crochet number one. Helps if I do it correctly. 
And when I come back to do round 10, this is my first stitch. Okay, so I like to, you can uh, crochet over your yarn tails, which I, I do often, but I don't want the orange poking through. So I go about four stitches in, and then I immediately come over here. And um, because these are simple bowl fillers, I'm just gonna tie them off. If this were like a stuffed animal that a child would be playing with, then I would be taking more care to weave in my ends and all that jazz. But for the bowl filler, I'm not too concerned. So I'm gonna do a square knot clip my tails shorter and if I want to you know if I want to cut them shorter later I can but because it's just a simple decoration and bowl filler I'm not too concerned it's not going to be getting a whole lot of use so this is sufficient for me and it's a nice quick way to have this be such a quick project so I'm going to go ahead and continue on through orange I've already shown you how to do the invisible decreases and again I will see you back at the white color change just as a review and uh, we will go from there Pretty fun project so far. Are you guys keeping up? I know you can do it. We are at the change to white section. I'm at the end of my round for round 14 and we have an invisible decrease, okay? And it's the same way we changed the color before. It's just that we're doing a decrease. So I worked my stitches to where I, all I have to do now is pull through. Okay. Remove my stitch marker. And I loosely do my slip stitch. And I continue on with my pattern. So I do my four stitches. I come back. And if I need to tighten it a little bit, I can. And I'm going to tie knot and go over the other way to make this one of the strongest knots there is and again I'm only doing this simple way because I'm not worried about anybody playing with it usually I would weave in my ends and take extra care but for this I don't feel like it's necessary and now I get to carry on um, I also think that this would be a good point to add stuffing. So I think I'm gonna go get my stuffing and stuff with you on camera and then we'll continue on with the white and I'll meet you at the very end. So let me go get my polyfill. Got my big bag of polyfill. And I'm just gonna tear it up a little bit. Um, and you just start stuffing it in. And it's easier to stuff the bottom now because you get really good control of where your stuffing is going the sooner you do it. So this one I went for full but not too bulbous just because I wanted it to be able to be flat. And so that's the kind of same method I'm going to be doing. This is good for me for right now because I want it to be manageable as I'm crocheting. So I'm going to keep it about here. And I'm going to continue working around and I would just like you to notice the color change is a pretty nice color change. I like this method so keep going. We're almost done you guys. We're almost done. This is such a quick project so I'll see you guys um, when we are ready to finish off at the very tip of the candy corn. All right, oh goodness. Okay, so I just finished my invisible decreases in each stitch around on round 22. So now I'm at the point where 
I have to fasten off And this is it. If I want to stuff it at all, then I've got to stuff it now. Which I've got my chopstick. I'm using actually the blunt end of my chopstick. And this is it. If I want to add any more stuffing, this is my opportunity, which I'm going to add a little bit more because as your stuffed object wears over time, it's gonna lose its puff and it's gonna lose its stuffing as the stuffing compacts into each other. So I always add a little bit extra, but you don't wanna to add too much to where it's um, bulging out of your stitching. And plus, I like to flatten it out, so of course the stuffing is gonna go up. And the hardest part for me is to get them symmetrical looking. But I think I've just about gotten it. I've flattened this one out so it's more sit upable. So I think I have enough. So now that I'm content with my stuffing, which I hope I am, I'm going to fully finish this off by pulling my string out of the loop. Get this on my tapestry needle here. And then you just go through each six. So you go one, two, three, four. You can also just do the front loop, which is really what you probably should have done. Five, but this works just fine too. Six. And there you go. Then I take this back on my needle. Just weave it through a couple times to stitch it closed. Then once I'm satisfied, I go through the stuffing and out the white yarn, pull it taut, and I snip, and that yarn is gonna go right back in, and now I'm fully done. And what I liked to do with this one is I liked to kinda push the top down, and just maneuver that stuffing, and mold it to how you want it to look. Probably could have put a little bit more stuffing at the top, but that's okay. And I'm gonna flatten it. Working with my stitching. And boom. I've got two really super cute candy corn. They are the same size, they look good. I've stuffed them about the same. My invisible uh, decreases worked really well. There's no major log, uh, leg, there's no lag between rows. It's practically invisible. If you're a crocheter, you might see it, but otherwise the common eye is not going to see it. And I think this was great. This is a really great beginner amigurumi project. So here we go. Done. Thank you so much for watching you guys. I hope that you found today's tutorial really helpful and I hope that you go ahead and make some of these. Honestly, you can make one of these in less than an hour. I love these. 
Um, please go ahead and make sure you subscribe and get the notification bell so every time I upload a new video, because I have a lot of goodies coming up, as you can see, this basket is full of upcoming tutorials. So again, thanks for watching. See you in the next project. Bye.